Hey guys, so this week I thought I'd share with you my Oxford interview experience through the medium of whiteboard art. So my story begins in November 2013 when I first received my offer. It was quite late in November actually so I was really really nervous but I was really pleased when the letter came through and I opened it to find out that I had an interview at St Hughes which was the college that I applied for. The next few weeks were pretty hectic and I was trying to do loads of reading so I was prepared and I spent a lot of time on the student room getting all the tips that I could about the interview experience as a whole. And I even had a really scary practice interview with my head of sixth form and it was absolutely terrifying. Soon enough my interview came round and because all of my interviews were in one day I got to go up the night before. Um, so I got the train up to Oxford and I stayed at St Hughes that night ready for my four interviews. I had two at St Hughes and then two at St Anne's as well. I was really, really worried. I remember getting the train and being really, really nervous. But I got there safely and that was fine. When I first arrived, it was really dark. And for those of you who know the geography of Oxford at all, St Hughes is pretty far north and the train station is nowhere near it. So I spent a good 40 minute walk trying to find St Hughes. And that was a nice way to sort of get to see Oxford um, in sort of the winter night time, which was really nice, but equally, it was quite stressful trying to get that far north and find out where St Hughes actually was. I got there soon enough though, and for those of you who can't tell, this is a nice picture of the big gates at the front of St Hughes. Um, and the first thing I did, I went into the Porter's Lodge, and they were super friendly and super helpful, and they gave me a key and pointed me towards the interview helpers, and they welcome you, and they're really, really friendly, and they show you to your room. Now my room was fairly decent, it's actually one of the undergraduate rooms that they're still used today. And they drop you off with all your stuff and then they leave you, leave you be. And I remember that was the first time I really felt really isolated and genuinely scared because nobody really around, I felt so small. And suddenly Oxford seemed like this big entity that was absolutely terrifying. In the end I decided to go down to the common room and see who else was there. And there were loads of other interviewees who'd been there for a few days and all, had all made friends already. I remember that Camptown was on in the background and everybody seemed so intelligent. Um, so I was a bit nervous at the start, but in the end I chatted to them and everybody was really, really friendly and got to make friends over a, a pub quiz. I didn't stay for too long though. I decided to grab an early night, so I did a little bit of reading. I remember reading about mRNA and then set my alarm and got a good night's sleep ready for my big day the next day. I got up really early so I had a chance to properly get ready and psych myself out for the interview. Um, I remember being really nervous about what to wear. And in the end, everybody wore so many different things, from hoodies to suits. I just went for a nice, smart casual, and it didn't really seem to matter at all. So I headed back to the common room, ready for my first interview, because that's where you got directed from. And I was so, so nervous. But I bumped into some of my friends that I met the night before, and they were really, really friendly and sort of encouraged me to be positive. And also the interview helpers were there. And they've all been through it before, they know what it's like, and they're really sympathetic, and they're so kind and encouraging, and it was just exactly what I needed before my interview. Before too long, I was called for my very first in interview, and boy was I scared, and rightly so, because it turned out to be the worst of my four. My interviewer had this really bland, emotionless expression, so I couldn't tell how it was going. And he asked me these math questions, and I, it completely threw me, but in the end, he asked me some logical thinking questions, some psychology questions, and it got a bit better, but I was still really thrown by the whole experience. So I did what any young person would do in that kind of situation. And I went outside, and it was snowing. And I rang my mum, and I had a moan and a cry about how awfully it was going. And she calmed me down, and then I had to head back to the JCR for my next interview. When I got there, my friend, who was also uh, applying for biomedical sciences, had just got back from his interview, and we bonded over how awfully it went for both of us. And made me feel a lot better. And there were tea and biscuits. So we both calmed down and had a bit of a laugh. Eventually he was called for his second interview, but he left and I was feeling a lot better. My second interview went a lot, lot better than my first one. And I really got along with the man and woman who were interviewing me, which was really good. And we had a really good chat about science. Um, and they asked me some correlation questions, which I thought I'd answered quite well. And we also looked at some genetic traits. Um, I had a really good discussion about that and I even made them laugh. And I really came away from that feeling really positive about the discussion that we'd had, and I felt so much better. From there, I bid goodbye to St Hughes and travelled 10 minutes down the road to the lovely St Anne's for my second two interviews. Once again, I found myself in their common room, 
And I remember really, really distinctly that they were playing Mean Girls. And I got chatting to another Biomed interviewee. And we had a really good chat about how things were going. And, and we got on really, really, really well. I remember feeling a lot more confident this time. I thought I sort of got used to how the interviews went um, and got used to talking out loud and talking about my thought process, which is exactly what they wanted to hear. They didn't necessarily want me to be, to be right, just to hear how I was thinking. I think my next interview really sort of illustrated that point. I remember that I got given this skull of an animal and um, one of the questions related to how it could perceive distance if it didn't have depth perception. And I was coming up with all these crazy ideas of how it could possibly do that. I remember being really disappointed because the answer was so simple. It was, it was just so basic and I completely missed it. But I think they really appreciated the thought process that went into my answer. By the time my last interview came around, I was less nervous and more sick of the whole day and just wanted to go home. Um, I remember getting asked about animal ethics questions and they also asked about my extended project on serial killers. So I felt quite comfortable talking about those topics and because I wasn't so nervous, I think I came across a lot more confident, which I think was really positive. And then my interviews were over and I was so relieved. So here are some of my top tips from my experience. Number one, always think out loud. I think this is the most important point. Um, they want to hear your thought process. They want to hear um, exactly what you're thinking. They don't necessarily want you to get the right answer. Number two, everybody there is in the same boat. Everybody might seem really confident and um, clever, but if you actually ask them, they're probably feeling exactly the same as you. So don't worry about that. Number three, you're always going to dwell on the bad bits. Everybody does. I remember coming back and just thinking about that first interview and how badly it had gone. And it plagued me for days and days and days. I genuinely thought I wasn't going to get a, an offer, but I did, so don't worry about it. And number four, probably the most important, Oxford isn't the be-all and end-all. If you're getting an interview, you're already an excellent candidate, and they're just trying to see if you're a good fit for them as tutors. And if you're not, that's not anything against you. You're going to do excellently at whatever institution you end up at. So don't feel disheartened if you don't get an offer, because you will do great wherever you end up. And that's about it. That's all my tips. So good luck for your interviews, and I hope they go well. If you have any questions, just ask me below. Good luck.